What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you a brand new AI that's been hidden behind a long waitlist and I gained access to it just yesterday. That being GitHub Copilot X, or at least the first part of this that they're rolling out to users on a waitlist. You can join the waitlist for GitHub Copilot X by heading to the link in the description down below, scrolling down and joining some of the waitlists here. We have a waitlist for the GitHub Copilot X technical preview, which is GitHub Copilot chat. When you have access, you'll see this page here saying that you're in. Scrolling down further, there's Copilot for Docs, which I've also requested access to Copilot's information on pull requests and things like that, as well as a CLI for GitHub Copilot at the very bottom, which is also pretty interesting. I can see myself using this a lot, but of course, these are all different waitlists. So without further ado, if you get access to GitHub Copilot chat, how do we install it? Well, you'll get an email saying you can install it for either Visual Studio Code Insiders, they're very specific about that, which is essentially the pre-release version of Visual Studio Code that anyone can get access to. And if you choose to use Visual Studio instead, you'll also find a link to the extension in the Visual Studio store. You'll just need to make sure that you're running Visual Studio 2022 17.5.1 or higher. For most people though, you'll be using the Visual Studio Code plugin. That's what I'll be doing here. It is something that only works inside of VS Code Insiders, so you'll need to download that and open it. If you're not already using VS Code Insiders, you'll find a download link in the description down below. Assuming you have installed it, open it up, open yourself a project just so we have something to look at, and we'll head to the extensions tab in the far left. Then we'll search for GitHub Copilot Chat. Just make sure you find the correct one from github.com, you can see him, and install the pre-release. Now that we have a pre-release copy installed, all we need to do is make sure that we're signed in. On top of this, you'll also need the GitHub Copilot extension installed, but not the normal one. If you have the normal one installed, uninstall it and install GitHub Copilot nightly. Then you'll need to probably reload VS Code Insiders. Now you've got both of these set up. You'll see in the bottom right that we need to sign into GitHub. So I'll sign in here, allow, and it'll take me to my browser where I can confirm it, click open, and now we should be signed in. Now you'll see a new chat icon in the activity panel here, GitHub Copilot. We can generate unit tests for our code, explain the selected code, propose a fix for bugs in the code, etc. These are really exciting features, and these are just examples of what we can do. So if I open up my Explorer here, head into maybe my Techno Account Switcher, Server, followed by maybe a way to close different programs like Steam and stuff. Over here, I have a different methods such as task kill. We have trying to close it from a processes list just above it, etc. Let's go ahead and select this code here and we'll ask GitHub Copilot chat what's going on. So explain the selected code. After we type in a prompt at the bottom or select a preview prompt, it'll collect some information and tell us what's going on over here. So selected code is C sharp that closes a running process by its name. The method first checks if the process is running. If the process is not running, it'll return true. Otherwise, it'll use the process start info class to create a new process that runs task kill, force, all child processes, followed by image name, waits for the program to exit, and then returns success. Cool. Well, that explained it pretty well. Let's say maybe propose a fix for the bugs in my code here, and they can't identify any bugs. That's reasonable. I don't think there are any glaring issues here. Maybe a missing comma or something like that may trip it up. So let's see what happens. Line 146, you're trying to split the process name, blah, 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 blah. That's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for line 146. 47, and that would have been caught. Oh, actually expanding it. Yeah, it fixed it. It gave me a suggestion on how to improve my code here. So that did work. There are some other suggestions here that may be useful, such as I'm using the start method to start the process, but I'm not checking to see if it has started successfully. We can use this to redirect the standard error stream to check for any errors. We're using output data received to capture the output of task kill, but it may not capture all of the output, especially if the output is large. Instead, use the standard output property. Interesting. A few little tips that I probably wouldn't have thought of here. Let's say optimize. And how do they say it? The selected code. So optimize the selected code. Let's hope I spelled that correctly. 
And here are some optimizations that can be made to the selected code. In line three, so I suppose they're taking my prompt here, adding a new line, and then adding all of the code in the prompt to whatever LLM this is. And they're saying line three, so this first line here, we're checking if closing method is either combined or task kill using a separator. We can use a contains method to check if closing method contains either. This will make it more concise. And they give an example of how it works down here, which is probably useful. Then line five, so what's that? Three down, this one, I suppose. We're using the where method to filter the list of processes by the process name. Instead of using where, we can use first or default to get the first process that matches the process name. This will make the code more efficient as it'll stop searching after it makes the first match. That is useful and it is a slight optimization, but unfortunately I want all of the processes. So this isn't really gonna help me as I'm trying to close all of them at once instead of just one at a time. Then line 19, output data received. To capture the output of task kill, instead we can use standard output. Scrolling down, it gives me an example somewhere here. Ah, right, it changed here. So process two using start info. So starting it and then reading the output text, waiting for exit, and then follows it up with the normal code at the bottom here. Cool. Now we can also click this button here to insert the code and our cursor, but that copies it in as one giant block. If we instead choose copy, we can replace it manually. Of course, if you select code and ask it to optimize or something like that, simply clicking the button to insert it may be what you're looking for as it'll replace it outright. It'll just mess up the spacing probably. Finally, the three dots on the far right, we can insert it into a new file or run the code in the terminal. That's really cool. Now, of course, these are just a few options that we can use. A more interesting option, for example, may be generating unit tests for our code as that is something that probably all programmers despise. So here are some unit tests we could use for the closed process method, which is somewhere here. Oh, no, it's nowhere here. Interesting. I'm not too sure what it's talking about. It's probably hallucinating a bit, and it seems to have repeated the same thing a few times. I'm not too sure what it's going on about, and I don't think this has got processes anywhere in it. Yeah, okay, well, it's hallucinating a little bit, but it gets the gist of it. I assume if I gave it more concise code that wasn't absolute garbage, they did probably do a better job, but anyways, that's GitHub Copilot chat, and I can see myself using this quite a bit. I already move across to ChatGPT and copy in sections of code and ask it how to do things, but this, this is pretty cool. When does your training data end? Training data is constantly being updated and improved by the creators at OpenAI. All right, so it's using GPT-4 probably. Specific version ends August 2021. Okay, that's a little bit sad. I would have expected something to be created by GitHub hub and Microsoft, but maybe they're working on that in the background. Who knows? But it's still cool nonetheless that it can generate unit tests and things like that for us built into the console here. And of course, completely for free, assuming you already have access to it through GitHub Copilot. But anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. Once again, you'll find the waitlists in the description down below should you be interested. Hopefully you'll get in soon if you want to try it out. I've been waiting a few months. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.